It's week 13 and we're back in Atlanta, Georgia as the 8-3 first place Atlanta Falcons look for a season sweep and firm control of the NFC South as they host the Carolina Panthers who were hammered by these Falcons 32-13 all the way back in week 2. Second play of the game, Ray Gilbert's throwing and connects with Austin Trailer over the middle for 18 yards on a first down. Next play, Gilbert with the fake and throwing again and has Kyle Woods over the middle for 19 yards across midfield. Then on the following play, Gilbert fakes again and has Austin Hooper for 22 more and another first down and move the chains again as two plays later Casey Rivers has 11 yards to make it first and goal where two plays later it's Rivers again but this time it's for six points as he finds the end zone for the ninth time this season and gives the Falcons an early 7-0 lead Atlanta gets it right back Gilbert throwing and is going to hit Kyle Woods for 11 yards and a first down two plays later Gilbert throwing again stands in and fires to McCole Hardman for 22 yards and a first down right to midfield then two plays later again it's the Ray Gilbert special as he throws it directly to Trey Boston for the interception he brings it back into Falcons territory and has some choice words for Ray Gilbert as he says you're a dumb f***ing piece of shit, you stupid shit, suck an interception throw a mother Panthers turn and facing third and six. Newton looks to throw before taking off, and he's going to slide down after eight yards in the first down. Two plays later, Newton throwing moves to his left, and it's Newton with the Ray Gilbert specials. He throws it right to DeMonte Casey, and the Falcons get it right back on Casey's fourth pick of the year. And on Atlanta's first play, Gilbert hits Calvin Ridley on the slant, who has it ripped out of his hands. Carolina recovers, and it's a third turnover in a matter of seconds as the Panthers take right back over three plays later third and 13 where newton looks to throw and fires to curtis samuel for 17 yards to make it first and goal then facing third down again newton fires to the end zone but it's right at keanu neal and knocked away panthers send out randy bullock who connects on a 21 yard field goal and as the first quarter winds down carolina trails 7-3 mid second quarter now same score and third and inches is exterminated by jordan bugs as he picks up eight next play gilbert throwing drifts to his right and fires to Casey Rivers for 18 yards and another first down. Next play again, Gilbert looks to throw and fires under pressure. And for the second time, it's right to a Panthers defender. This time it's Justin Coleman and Carolina keeps points off the board and will take over at their own 10 yard line. And on their first play, it's Newton looking to throw, but he's gonna take off to his right. Two Falcons there, but he runs through both of them and is up the sideline for a 36 yard gain near midfield. Three plays later and Newton will throw this time as he goes to Curtis Samuel who breaks the tackle has the first down and another 20 yard gain next play and Newton fakes the give to McCaffrey and is going to find DJ Moore for 15 yards to make it first and goal then on second and goal Newton looks to throw then starts to run but say hello to Lorenzo McManus who bear hugs him to the ground and make it six sacks on the season for the 2020 first rounder out of Clemson so make it third and goal where Newton's throwing again fires and his pass is tipped and going to be intercepted I Isaiah Oliver is up the Falcon sideline and has nothing but green synthetic imitation turf in front of him. And the Panthers go from potentially taking the lead to down by 11 after the 95-yard pick six. First play of the ensuing drive and more bad news for Carolina as Newton looks to throw, tries to scramble, but runs right into the arms of Sean Chamberlain for the sack. And we would head into the break with a 14-3 Falcons lead. Minutes into the second half, Panthers near midfield where Newton fakes the give and floats a bomb deep downfield to DJ Moore, who's behind DeMonte Casey for the 58-yard score. Carolina misses the two-point conversion and the Panthers now trail by five. First play of the ensuing drive, Devontae Freeman takes the give, ducks under a tackle, and is into the clear. Nobody's going to catch him. He's inside the 30, inside the 20, inside the 10, and it's a 75-yard score to answer right back and make it 21-9. Panthers turn again and facing third and four. Newton throwing, and he's got DJ Moore behind the defense again. This time it's going to be a 67-yard score, and the craziness continues as the Panthers make it 21-16. 
lean. Carolina gets it right back and looking for the lead, but it's Sean Chamberlain with backside pressure to drop Newton to the turf, and his second sack of the day would lead to a Panthers punt. Later in the third, Falcons across midfield where Casey Rivers takes the give, has the first down in the 13-yard gain. Next play, Gilbert with the fake and rolling to his right where he dumps to Devontae Freeman who jukes one defender and has 11 more and another first down. Then on the following play, Gilbert fakes and looks to throw again and fires to Calvin Ridley for 18 to make it first and goal. And that leads to third and goal where Casey Rivers claws his way into the end zone for the second time today and the Falcons push their lead to 12 as they make it 20. 8-16. Fourth quarter now, Panthers facing third and 18 where Newton fires to Curtis Samuel for 21 yards and a first down across midfield. Two plays later, second and four where Newton looks to throw and starts to scramble, but Deion Jones is spying him and takes him down for the sack. His second of the day and the loss of two is going to bring up third down. And on the next play, DeMonte Casey comes screaming off the edge but can't catch Newton. He dives and misses as Newton starts bulldozing defenders on his way to a 25-yard game. Next play again, Newton tries to throw, but immediate pressure, and he's hit, ball comes out, Panthers recover, but it's a 12-yard loss. And facing third and 22 from the 25, Newton throwing, moves to his left, stands in and moves to his left again before throwing to Auden Tate, who has 17 yards down inside the 10. Field goal does Carolina zero good here, so that's exactly what they'll do. And the 25-yard Randy Bullock field goal makes it 28-19 and cuts the Falcons lead to nine. Atlanta's first play play and Devontae Freeman takes it up the middle for 11 yards and a first down. Next play and Gilbert looks to throw, stands in, steps up and takes off and he's going to pick up the first down as he dives head first for a 15 yard gain. Then two plays later, Gilbert with the fake and dropped immediately by Eric Reed for the sack and the 12 yard loss pushes Atlanta back to midfield and would lead to a Falcons punt. Panthers turn and facing third and 10 where they run the ball and Taj Palmer only picks up five. So make it fourth down where the Panthers decide to throw this time and Newton finds Curtis Samuel for 12 to keep the drive alive. Then three plays later, third and six where Newton's throwing again, but it's Sean Chamberlain for the third time today, taking him down for the sack. And he gets up and says, that's three mother sacks on your piece of offensive line. I'm a mother beast. So make it fourth down again where Newton fires to David Wells who makes the catch, breaks a tackle and the Panthers drive yet again stays alive. Next play, Newton with the fake and is going to find Corey Meeks over the middle for 25 yards on a first down into Atlanta territory. Next play again and Newton goes right back to Corey Meeks who makes the catch, runs by a tackler, has the first down and another 20 yard gain. Then with two minutes to go, Newton throwing and it's who else but Corey Meeks for 15 yards to make it first and goal. Panthers rush to the line. Newt looking to throw and standing in before finding DJ Moore for the one-handed catch in the back of the end zone. And with 1.33 to go, the Panthers make it a two-point game. Now Carolina needs a stop, but on the Falcons second play, it's Casey Rivers cutting back and picking up 12 yards on the first down and make it a season sweep for Atlanta as they hold on for the 28-26 win. Cam Newton racks up 468 total yards while DJ Moore adds 10 catches for 196 and three touchdowns, but it's the Falcons who come away with their second straight win to move to nine and three, and it'll be a short week upcoming as they host the Lions on Thursday night. Okay, so that ended up being a lot closer than it needed to be and got pretty wild there at the start of the second half, but we pick up another much-needed win and end up with a season sweep of the Panthers as we now head into the home stretch of the season at 9-3. and three. First up for team activities here is our final negotiation of the regular season, and it's with long snapper Josh Harris, who we signed to a three-year deal worth $2.85 million. And I do this because I like to keep the long snapper on the roster just to make things the slightest bit tougher in terms of roster building. No draft stories or tweets this week, so it's straight to the draft board where we added four players, starting with Caleb Evans, a fourth-round true talent center. Following him is DeAndrew Hamilton, a second-round corner, and then below him is another fourth-round center in William Kopp. Then wrapping up the additions is fourth-round true talent running back Evan Spencer. 
A lot of players had skill points this week, but we start with star linebacker Deion Jones, who is now a 94 overall after a plus two to man coverage and plus ones to both play rec and zone coverage. Running back Ido Smith remains at a 78 overall, but does receive a two point increase to his catch rating and a one point increase to his short route running. Following him is rookie wide receiver Kyle Woods, who is now a 77 overall after one point increases to his break tackle and catch in traffic, as well as a three point increase to his short route running. Next up is cornerback Kendall Sheffield who reaches a 72 overall after two point upgrades to both his awareness and zone coverage to go along with a one point increase to his tackle and then lastly is our rookie running back Casey Rivers who sadly graduates the 69 club after one point increases to his acceleration catching speed and spin move ratings. And it's around the league we go now. We're on Thursday night. The Broncos win 41-35 against Jacksonville. Ravens hammer the Steelers. Cowboys, Seahawks, and Browns all win by a field goal. Jets win 31-20 over the Bucks, while the Bears, Eagles, Cardinals, and Bills all pick up home victories. Beats win 28-20 against the Bengals. Redskins take down the Raiders, and the Rams do the same to the Colts. Then on Sunday night, it's Tennessee with a 26-17 win over the Patriots. And wrapping up week 13 was a 24-7 Saints victory against the Packers on on Monday night. On to the standings where we start in the AFC East where the Patriots still lead with a 9-3 record and a two-game lead over the Dolphins. Jets at 5-6-1 and, and Bills at 3-8-1 still remain behind. The Browns lead the North at 9-3 and, and are two games ahead of the 7-5 Ravens. The defending champ Bengals sit in third at 5-7 and seven, while the Steelers look well on their way to another top five pick. The Texans lead the South at 7-4-1 and one, but only by a half game over 7-5 Jacksonville. Then sitting behind them are the 5-7 and seven Colts and Titans who are still alive but need to turn things on immediately. And leading the AFC West is the current number one seeded Broncos who are 10-2 and two with a two-game lead over the 8-4 and four beats. Chiefs are 5-7 and seven and hold a one-game lead over the 4-8 and eight Raiders. Moving to the NFC, it's the Cowboys with firm control of the East with an 8-4 and four record and a three-game lead over the second-place Giants and Redskins while the Eagles remain in last at 4-7-1. and one. The race for the NFC North title has been closed to just one game as the 8-4 and four Vikings lead with the 7-5 and five Bears right behind. Packers are 3-9 and nine in third place while the last place Lions are 1-10-1. The win over Carolina gives us essentially a four-game lead over the Panthers as we have a three-game lead and the season sweep. Saints are in third place and the Bucs and years remain in last. Then out west, the Seahawks have all but locked up the division title as they're 10-2 and two and have a three-game lead with four to go. Rams and 49ers are tied for second place at 7-5, and five, while the Cardinals remain in last at 5-7. and seven. Taking home the AFC Player of the Week on offense is our old friend Matt Ryan. The former Falcon was 23-31 of 31 passing for only 269 yards, but found the end zone four times to lead the Beats to a 28-20 win over the defending Super Bowl champion Bengals. On the NFC side, it's Bears rookie quarterback Quincy Price taking home the award. Price completed over 80% of his passes for 339 yards and four touchdowns while adding 32 rushing yards and another touchdown on the ground in the Bears 38-10 beatdown of Minnesota. Defensively for the AFC, Ravens cornerback Marlon Humphrey is the Week 13 winner. The 2017 first rounder only made two tackles but matched that total with two interceptions and also returned one for a score as the Ravens destroyed the Steelers 38-14 this week. And taking home the NFC award is Khalil Mack as we have another Bears sweep of the NFC awards. Mack did just about everything this week, notching nine tackles with two going for a loss, four and a half sacks, and also picked off Johnny Salisbury in Chicago's destruction of Minnesota. Leading the way in passing yards is once again our very own Ray Gilbert who has 3,474 yards passing. And the Browns' Baker Mayfield is once again the leader of passing touchdowns with 31, and his 128.2 passer rating is still a league best. The rushing leaders remain the same this week as the Giants' Saquon Barkley leads in both rushing yards with 1,346 as well as yards per carry with a 6.4 average and adding another rushing touchdown is Steelers running back James Conner who now has a league best 12 scores on the ground. The receiving leaders see a bit of a shakeup as DJ Moore's huge game against us has him now leading the league with 72 catches and 13 touchdown receptions. Then despite only having 10 yards this week, Titans receiver Adam Humphrey still has a league best 1,051 yards receiving. Then wrapping up with the defensive leaders, it's the same trio this week as last with Tremaine Edmonds leading with 113 tackles, Vaughn Miller with a league best 13 and a half sacks, and Jets safety Marcus May still leading the way with six interceptions. 
Looking forward to next week, we kick things off by hosting the 110 and 1 Lions on Thursday night. Bills are on the road against the Jets, Saints are at the Panthers, and the Cowboys face the Redskins in Washington in more divisional action. Giants face the Vikings in Minnesota, the 5 and 7 Colts face the 7 and 5 Dolphins in Miami, Bears host the Packers in NFC North action, and the 1 and 11 Buccaneers play host to Mitchell Trubisky and the 9 and 3 Patriots. Broncos take their 10 and 2 record to Philly to face the Eagles. Matt Ryan and the Beats look for a road divisional win against the Raiders. Old Browns face the New Browns in Cleveland and the Chiefs head to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. The 49ers and Rams face off in a huge NFC West game. Cardinals host the Seahawks in a less huge NFC West game. Then on Sunday night, the Bengals face the Titans in Tennessee and wrapping up the week is a game for first place in the AFC South as Jacksonville plays host to Houston. And that's going to do it for today. Big win that gives us firm control of the division lead. And I believe our magic number is only one for the division title. And looking at the schedule, we get the 1-10-1 Lions next. And then two of our last three games are against the 1-11 Buccaneers. So playoffs are definitely on the horizon. But like I said... (laughs) 